of Mexico. And I, I, I learned how to bend it and I travel with her everywhere I go, more or less, especially if it's a warm climate since then. Uh, I've been using a lot of hats, but I will tell you, this is very light and very practical. And today we're going to talk about solo traveling in Mexico. So as you see, I'm a little bit tanned. I am right now in Denver, Colorado, but I just got back from Mexico. And I go to Mexico more or less every year, right in the end of the sunny period and before the rain period. And, and I wanna share, uh, this video will be uh, video number one, solo traveler in Mexico. And basically this is the first step that I always do if I wanna rent a car. And I'm gonna give you some numbers in what is a normal price for a car rental in Mexico and why I advise people to rent a car in Mexico and what is a price that is reasonable for a car rental in Mexico. So I will tell you I've been traveling quite a lot, not only in Mexico, but in Europe. And this is gonna be a solo travel video blog about hacks, how to travel alone. And I will share some hacks, how I travel alone as a female, blonde, you know, how Mexican Sea is blonde and all that and how to travel safely, you know? So I'm talking about car rental. A few years ago on my first, tri first trip, or one of my first trips in Mexico, uh, again, it was solo. And as most of the people that want to travel to Mexico, they want to make sure everything is organized and, and they try to book a car rental online from here no no and no this is a big mistake and now i will explain you why so when i rented a car a few years ago from here and i purchased the car rental and the car insurance online uh, the moment that i arrived in mexico i had a huge problem and this is something that happened every time someone purchase a car rental on booking expedia it doesn't matter where you purchase it. It's, it's always exactly the same experience. You get there, you have already paid for your car and for your car insurance. And instead, when you arrive at the car rental, they ask you additional money and they tell you it's for insurance. And most of the people doesn't know that they have already paid. I personally pay it separately from the car rental. So I knew I had it. And I show the guy the document and, and then it started to be this very stressful discussion, um, uh, like arguing back and forward. They do not accept insurance that you purchase on this website. Actually, to be honest with you, on my last trip, I will tell you that they are crazy avid for money. And if you look all these series of solo traveler in Mexico, you're going to see me crying after the next crazy experience of people stealing from you, lying to you, gaslighting you and being dishonest with you because you're a solo traveler. But let's go back to the car rental. So the rule number one is do not rent it or purchase car rental with the insurance outside of Mexico. Because the moment that you arrive at the airport, if it's Cancun, if it's Mexico City, it doesn't matter where is it, they will ask you to pay insurance, their own insurance. They will not allow you to drive a car out of the car rental if they don't like strap your skin with some money because they are like the car rental experience in Mexico is traumatizing. And I will explain you why and I will explain you how to be ready and what you need to know before you go there. So number one, as I said, don't rent it from here. Once you arrive at the airport, you're going to see all these car rentals on the both side is like a windows and they're all trying to stop you and tell you I'm going to give you a good car rental. Um, so I used to work in a car rental company called Budget in Mykonos like 17, 18 years ago when I was really young. I was living in this island in Greek called Mykonos and I just had a very bad car accident. I was afraid to drive and for una buona sorte or no, as they say it, 
I started working there and I was, I was really scared. But anyway, let's talk about the car rental. So normally they will give you a price. They, let's say they would tell you, I, I ask you like hundred dollars a day. That would be just for the rent. And then they will tell you uh, extras, which they are kind of obligatory. It's the insurance. They will force you in Mexico to buy an insurance. The truth is that you are not obliged by law in any country to purchase insurance because on the price of the rental, there is a basic insurance included. So the truth is that you don't have to purchase any additional insurance and for the car rental companies when you do purchase it you just give them free money the reason why is because the car that you you gonna take it have any kind of insurance before it's even put it for rent and if somebody explode this car or throw it in the caribbean sea the guys the rental company let's say it's hertz or budget i used to work for budget they, they are not losing anything. Nobody in this company will lose a dime. It's going to be the insurance company that have to cover the expense of this car to a certain amount, which is the market value of the car. Let's be realistic, okay? So, when you start to walk in the Cancun airport, you're going to see all these windows with people that will try to stop you. So, what I, I did and I am advising you to do is to walk to each of these windows and ask them, I do speak some terrible Spanish, but they do understand me and ask them how much you're gonna charge me for one week. Normally, this is the, the period of the time that I'm gonna rent a car for. So, one week, it's, uh, it's a standard amount to rent a car, seven days or 10 days. And honestly, longer you rent the car, cheaper the car should be per day. This is a rule in a, in a car rental. And if you're good at negotiating, you should know these rules. If it's, if it's up to between seven and 10 days is the most expensive. When it's more than, uh, it's 14 days is cheaper. If you wanna rent it for the entire month, the price is gonna go even down per day. So the total amount will be a little bit higher, but the amount per day should be less. So uh, I went around and I asked for different prices and I will tell you, uh, the medium and the normal range to rent a car in one week period of time, and I'm talking about economical car, four seats. I, I would always take the manual ones because I prefer manual in Mexico because it's so hot and the automatic cars tend to have hard time there. Um, so anyway, I will take, let's talk about economic cars or normal cars that you can rent that are not so crazy. So the range of the normal price is between that will make the car rental company earn money and make you have a good deal. It's between 2000 and 3000 pesos. And I will tell you what this amount, this is including the rent and the full damage waiver. Okay, so I went around and asked most of the people, they don't want to even say it, they write it down and they give you this amount and some of them it's uh, to 2,100 pesos. Some of them, they try to, uh, to give you crazy prices. For example, National asked me 8,000 pesos for the most economical car. So if you don't know how much a car costs and you don't know the real value, of a car rental, you could pay 10,000 pesos for economical car just because you have no idea of the real value of, the, of what you're renting. But so the normal price for car rental is between 2,000 and 3 to 4,000 pesos. Depends on what class of a car, but I'm talking about a simple car. And if you want to have all type of insurance, and I don't know, I have some little extra on the top, right? So when you get a negotiation, they write it down on a ticket, which they give it to you at the airport, and then the bus takes you to the actual office, which is five minutes drive from the airport in Mexico. And I have a video that I'm gonna plug to this one. Uh, and, and once you get there, they write a contract. There is always a huge line. This year I ran from Hertz. The price that I paid was 1,500 pesos, which is equal to $75 for one week. This is a lot of money in Mexico. Have in mind that one monthly income salary 
is 1,200 pesos. So 1,500 pesos for one week car rental is a really good deal for them and is a really good deal for me. And this is called the standard of life differences. So you gotta take advantage of them when you travel. So once you get to the office, they did write a contract for me. And I, I shot a video, you can check this video. <laughs> So you see the video of the line and, and what happened when the guy finished to write the contract for a car rental, he gave me a piece of paper. Do not trust that they gonna follow the agreement and write what they promise. So do go and do see if the price that they promise you is the price that is written on the contract they tend to change it without letting you know and just asking you to sign and if you don't understand the difference between the pesos and the dollars and you just sign you're gonna eventually pay the double of what you agree or even more so i advise you even if you're tired stay alert this is exactly what happened this year again because this is renting car in mexico is terrible it's stressful it's terrifying so once he finished writing the contract, he, he, he gave me a contract for 2,700 pesos, totally 2,636.66. I, I was ready to pay more than what I agreed, but what really disturbed me is, is the dishonesty because the guy of Hertz saw me that I was looking, I'm checking the prices around and he got that I'm going to get the best deal. And, and so all the guys try to get you. When you walk there, all the car rentals want to close the deal with you, right? So he wanted to close the deal with me. So he offered me 1,500 pesos for one week. I mean, I cannot break this deal. It's $75. It's a great amount of money for one week car rental. So I, I couldn't just not take this opportunity. But when I went for the contract, they tried to add additional, uh, almost double. They almost tried to double it. And this really bugged me. And I said to the guy, you know what? I am here waiting about an hour already for a deal that you promised me. And now you tell me that you cannot fulfill that deal and if that's not the case i'm ready to walk out and i will go the next door and without having all this headache i'm just gonna get another car so they don't like bad advertisement and he called the manager and the manager just type that sit down and and write the contract exactly the way they promised to me and, and this was, this is stressful. This is stressful, but just have in mind that in Mexico, when you rent a car, this is how the process is. One, once you're done with the contract, they will walk you out and make you check the car. It's called the check-in of the car or like to see the condition. Make sure you take pictures because if there is a scratches on the car or anything like that which i took the pictures you're gonna see them right here once you return the car and if you did not take pictures of it they can attach it to you okay so just be ready for any kind of crap i did take a picture the car had a, a very deep scratch on the bottom ramp on the side of the right side of the car and I, I take even small scratches. I took picture of the whole outside and, and the inside. They just want to make sure that everything is a little bit cleaner because they are crazy for money. I am going to tell you they are crazy for money. Uh, the previous year I get dollar store budget. The years before I get national. When I went to the other side of Mexico, close to Tijuana, I rented. I, I, could, I didn't find my driving license. So I used the cooperative as the bus. Either way just have in mind that you gotta take the pictures just make sure you take the pictures before you get the car and keep them on your phone in the worst case scenario because i'm gonna talk now about the checkout most of the time when you go to check out your car if if, if you didn't check what your contract say and you didn't see that it's a different charge they will charge you differently the, the way stipulated not what they promise you 
So when you sign the contract, they ask you to put 5,500 pesos guarantee. They just hold this amount on your card. They don't take the money. They just put all there. The moment that you return the card, the car, they would actually charge you the stipulated on the contract, not what they told you they're going to charge you, what they wrote in down. And this is why it's so important to make sure you check what they say, because they will try to add these additional services like a gas thousand pesos, which is a lot of money for gas. And most of the time you cannot bring the car empty. There should be some gas in it to drive it through there. So they will make money out of you this way and some additional things that you cannot even imagine what they are. So just have in mind that you don't have to purchase gas from them. You don't, it's not financially, um, it's not for you good financial interest, let's say that. And I know that a lot of solo travelers don't have so much money to invest in, in this kind of thing. So in order to do it cheap and safe, uh, the insurance that I will advise you is called bumper to bumper. Bumper to bumper is mean from one to other bumper and this is scratch or something happened on the car. Full damage waiver cover the engine brake. I don't know, some assistant, car assistance. But the truth is that if the car broke in the middle of the jungle, you got to sleep there. This is the truth. I will be honest with you guys because you will not have a phone service to call. So sadly, that there is places that there is no phone service and you got a hope of a good destiny that somebody will save you and help you. Set that checkout of the car. You drive. The checkout is pretty fast. I advise you to to tie the car a little bit up because if there is even one plastic bottle or something, some of these car rental companies, they don't want to take the car. They try to get some cash out of you, propina, propina, and they're really nasty with that, extremely nasty, okay? So a few times I threatened them. I know this is not a good thing to say, but they have this organization del consumator called Profiso, and I told one of the guys that if he doesn't, take the car because it's clean I will call this organization and I am gonna report his name I took a picture of him and his tag and I'm gonna make him get fired the truth is that there is organization in Mexico for uh, protection de consumator it's protection of the consumers and if you ever had somebody that take advantage of you as a consumer in this way you can call and you can complain and they are gonna be afraid because they're gonna lose their license so one time when I was returning the car, the, the person didn't want to accept it because there were two plastic bottles of water and there was a very little bit of a sand of my shoes. So I take the, the bottom thing and I clean it myself and I say, here you go. I took pictures of the car the way I return it in case they see that I did something to the car because you never know. I'm telling you, these people will do anything to steal money from you. Okay, so make sure that you take pictures of the car when you drop it off as well. Because maybe when you go home, they will try to charge you, which already happened to me last year. So this is just the worst part of Mexico. The renting car, it's nightmare there. And this is all you need to know about it. So when you check off the car, they will give you a small piece of paper and they will send you to the checkout, where is again line. Once you get there, they, this small list, in my case said that there was a scratch on the right side of the bumper i show him picture on my phone and i say here you go you see the date of this picture this is the time that i took the car uh this scratch was already there and and this was it i i drop it off it was pretty smooth uh compared to other car rental the hertz bus driver that drive it from the car rental drop point to the airport itself it was very polite they did not ask me for any cash and i was pleased to give them some tip you know i give him 10 pesos which is not it's a good tip for mexico but it's not such a big deal but if so i remember the previous year the guy from dollar rent car which is called dollar rent car will uh he wouldn't let me go to the airport he wanted to drive me to the bank to take some cash to give it to him so they're arrogant and they're aggressive. And you're going to see the car that I rented. Thank you for being here and have a good day. Bye-bye.